Welcome to LCN 6 on 6 Inquiry Learning. I'm sorry that I can't be with you on this very first week of the semester. I've never missed a tutorial ever, but uh, unfortunately this was beyond my control. And so I've created this uh, tutorial recording for you to listen to. Uh, and I've also been quite explicit in the activities that I would suggest that you do this week so that we can get off to a running start next week in week two when we meet together in our Zoom online meeting. So I'm going to move on to the next slide and we can begin exploring inquiry learning together. The, even the name inquiry learning indicates that it is all about questions. Inquiry learning is about finding a beautiful question and investigating it. What exactly is a beautiful question? It's an ambitious yet actionable question that can begin to shift the way we perceive or think about something and that might serve as a catalyst to bring about change. That's a pretty big ask for one single question. And obviously we're not going to have every single inquiry gathered around a beautiful question every time. But what I like about this definition of a question is that it inspires us because it says that it, the question is ambitious and yet actionable. Our inquiries should always be about something that we want to find out more about, that we're engaged and driven to find out and learn more about. And the same for our students. But they should be things that are achievable also, that are not beyond us. Although sometimes investigating questions that seem to have no answers can be the most rewarding. Uh, inquiry learning has a wonderful capacity to completely shift the way we think about things and to give us a deeper learning opportunity than we might have using other learning approaches. In the first half of this unit, the key and the module centers around you seeking the answer to your own beautiful question. And the beautiful question that you formulate is going to be associated with what you want to know about inquiry learning. And then in module two, you're going to be putting the skills and capacities that you've developed during module one into practice by designing a, an inquiry unit for your students so that they can have an experience of investigating a beautiful question. So what exactly is inquiry learning? Well, this is the million dollar question. And it sits in the centre of several very big ideas. Inquiry learning, as we've already discussed, is very much about questioning and asking questions. And there are big questions that form the shape and direction of our inquiry, but there are also questions that move us, move us along our inquiry and help frame our investigation through every stage. And that's why inquiry learning is centred upon questioning frameworks. It's also centred on the action research cycle. It's cyclical and iterative in the fact that we are taking an active investigative approach to answering those questions. And we are understanding that as we answer certain questions, more questions are going to be revealed to us and that we are constantly pausing on reflecting on our learning, reformulating our questions and continually in moving forward through our investigation. And the thing that shapes and informs our investigation and how we do that is our information literacy or the information seeking processes that we implement in order to direct our investigation and make sure that what we reveal at the end or towards as we receive answers for our, as we find answers for our inquiries uh, are valid and credible and are of high quality. So inquiry learning sits in the center of these three very big ideas. And that's what makes inquiry learning so intriguing, uh, but also so complex. I would encourage you to go to Mandy Lupton's blog. The link is there on the slide and investigate her po um, position on what is inquiry learning, where she elaborates on this in a lot more detail. The levels of inquiry are determined by the role of the teacher and the role of the student and how much agency and independence is given to the students as they develop their skills and strategies in uh, navigating the inquiry process. 
We begin with the conformational structured inquiry, which is essentially completely teacher driven. The answers or the outcomes of the inquiry are fixed or determined by the teacher and the teacher is essentially directing the student through the process or the steps of the inquiry and modelling and structuring their experiences so that they come to an end point where, which is already known by the teacher. This is more of an exposure to the inquiry process than the student actually engaging in true inquiry. But it's often seen in experiments, perhaps where students are in, um, working with dangerous or new materials and the teacher is taking control of that opportunity to learn or where the steps of the inquiry process are more important than the outcome of the inquiry and where the students are becoming familiar with the processes of seeking information and developing their information literacy. Then we have guided inquiry which is potentially the most common type of inquiry that you will encounter in a school setting. Guided inquiry is where the teacher directs the inquiry, they most probably initiate the topic or the question that is being investigated. Uh, the information that the student is working with is most probably new to that student. However, it's most probable that the teacher is familiar with that information and they have a fairly good idea of where the inquiry is going to end. So the student is experiencing a level of independence in their choices of what they investigate in terms of resources, the content that they're seeking out, the information that they're learning from, but the teacher is guiding the overall process so that the student uh, is getting an experience of how the investigation moves through the different stages. A coupled inquiry is where the student has developed a certain level of skills and capacity in inquiry and information seeking. And so the teacher may work with the student to initiate the inquiry and may be on, on, on the side able to guide or su support the student when needed, but the student is starting to develop their own independent inquiry processes and the teacher is slowly letting go. Finally, we have an open inquiry where the researcher or the student is completely unguided and the outcomes of the inquiry are potentially, potentially new to the discipline or society. And they're basically at the beginning, the outcomes are unknown and negotiable. The uh, information that the student is researching, the knowledge that the student is creating is something perhaps that hasn't been done before because the student has independently initiated the question, is independently pursuing the content and therefore constructing their own responses from their own perspectives and their own individual comp compilation of, of, of findings. We're most likely to find this in passion projects where the student is driven by a particular topic or need to answer a question that is not necessarily uh, driven by the curriculum or associated with uh, a content area or a knowledge area that the teacher has. Uh, and in independent research in university as well, that would be a completely open inquiry. This unit, LCN 616 Inquiry Learning, is designed to allow you to work independently, but also with the support of the cohort. So we will meet weekly after week one, beginning week two, from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. in a Zoom uh, tutorial space. And this will be a great chance for us to discuss concepts and topics, to answer questions and give each other feedback. Uh, I will be sharing some information and explaining some of the concepts and topics with, uh, for you. Um, but going on beyond that hour that we meet each week, we will have ongoing support through the course website and the MeWe private group. The MeWe private group is going to be where the Brains Trust exists which is basically you guys. And this is where you will have a space to interact with each other and myself to ask questions, share resources, give feedback and build connections with each other aligned with the connected learning ethos of this unit. The assignment out outcomes, assignment one and assignment, assignment two, are presented through your blog or online web space. 
Your blog will form part of your digital professional presence and contribute to professional conversation in this area. So you're encouraged to respond to the assignment topics in a way that reflects uh, your professional uh, opinions and your professional findings. Please don't see these as typical university assignments that are being completed simply to please me, the assessor, that these are creating useful professional artefacts and contributing to the professional conversations and which you can use as evidence of your capabilities, capacities and expertise in your own careers and professions. In saying this, the unit is divided into two modules, module one, which underpins assignment one and module two, which underpins assignment two. In module one, you will be engaging in research about inquiry. And you might see here that we've got the word research with a hyphen between re and search. And this is because true research with no hyphen is where we're actually uh, interrogating information in order to create new knowledge, whereas this is where you are exploring information in order to learn more about something which is already known by others. In this module and assignment one, you will be searching for information to answer your own inquiry questions, which you will formulate around what you want to learn more about with regards to inquiry learning pedagogy. And in assignment two, you'll be applying the information and the learnings that you experienced in, assi in assignment one to design or redesign a unit of work or unit of teaching. The design of the, of the unit will be a professional resource that you'll be encouraged to share with your colleagues outside of the course. And you'll be demonstrating best practice in inquiry learning through the uh, way that you design this unit or redesign this unit. So this week, I'm so sorry to leave you by yourselves, but hopefully this video will step you through everything you need to know. Um, it's possible that you have already taken the time to navigate to the Open Inquiry website, and that's fabulous. If you haven't had a chance yet, please go to the Open Inquiry website and um, read the front page, which is here on the screen. And once you've familiarized yourself a little bit, Click on Getting Started, which I've put a red box around. You can also get to it from the drop down menu underneath Home. And this will take you through to another page which will explain to you the information that you need in order to prepare for participation in this unit. So to get started with inquiry learning, uh, I, the first step is to familiarise yourself with the Open Inquiry website, which is the major area where I will be offering all of the information and resources for your successful completion of the unit. You will need to complete a MeWe, uh, create a MeWe account, and there's videos which will step you through that process. MeWe is a social media platform similar to Facebook, but with higher privacy levels and with the capacity for us to keep our group completely private and separate from any, uh, anyone else who's not enrolled. And uh, when you create the MeWe account, please join the LCN 616 private group. Once you have enrolled in that group, introduce yourself to the group. Uh, please include your name, perhaps uh, what you are currently teaching um, or your position in your school or your employment, um, your interest areas, what you hope to find out about in this subject and essential to add the hashtag introductions to your post. MeWe is navigated through hashtags and so when you make an entry including a hashtag will help us to find all of the related posts about that topic and read through them and as the unit goes on this will become increasingly important. And step four is to begin planning your blog space. Now I've included on the getting started page three different options for you. There's one page which has information for every student about the blog space that you'll be creating this semester. There's information for you if you've already created a blog space previously and want to know if you can build on that blog space rather than starting from scratch for this particular unit. And there's a third option for you with information if you've never created an online web space or blog space before. So uh, in the video that I uh, take you through the website, I show you those three options 
and um, please begin this early because this will f uh, form the space where you express your learning to me and to the community in la at large. And finally, finally, this is the step-by-step uh, -step Padlet that you will click on from the Getting Started page. And this is your activities for week one. It might look like a lot, but you're already halfway through a lot of them. So uh, it takes you through step by step what you need to do in order to be ready for us to start off uh, running in week two. So first watch this mini tutorial you're already at the end of. The slides are there for you if you'd like to go back and examine them further. If you haven't already done so, sign up to MeWe and read about your blogging uh, activities. Begin thinking about your choice of curation tool, which is an activity that we will be completing later in the term. And there's a blog post there that you can read about choosing a curation tool. Um, so that's something that you just need to start thinking of in the back of your mind for future. Start thinking about three researchable questions that you would like to pose and share one or more of these questions to the MeWe group with the hashtag inquiry question. So this uh, is going to form the very first blog post that you make for your assignment. And so it's important to begin thinking about this now. Um, but if you are unsure what I mean by researchable questions uh, and you need a little bit of extra information, go to the initial post page on the website and don't rush. Uh, this is something that we'll be working on next week as well. But what I would encourage you to do is spend a little bit of time reading about inquiry learning and information literacy. And there are some links there to some readings um, of, varying, of varying depth and, and length. Uh, those readings will give you just a, an introduction to the terminology and to the concepts and ideas behind inquiry learning to set you in a good space um, for next week. And if you would like to move ahead, go to tuning in, which is where you can begin thinking about your initial blog post. But don't feel any pressure for that. We're going to be talking about that in more depth in week two. Um, but the, the tasks really aren't too arduous and won't, shouldn't take you too long. So that brings us to the end of this short mini tutorial. I want to say thank you so much for choosing uh, to learn with me in inquiry learning. It should be a really fun uh, semester with lots of discoveries and some really good learning happening. Uh, if you have any questions at all now or throughout the semester, please ask the Brains Trust on the MeWe group because oftentimes they're questions that other people are also wondering about and by sharing the question we can answer and learn all together. But if you have any personal or uh, very specific inquiries, always feel free to email me. My email door is always open and I'm more than happy once we've uh, made email contact to arrange for face-to-face -face meetings or Zoom meetings. Um, but initial email contact is always the best way to get me. I'm always looking at my emails and checking them. So um, Thank you so much and I look forward to getting to know you all better and meeting you next week in week two.